Good day and welcome to another edition of Analyst Insights. I'm your host, Simbi Somosa, and with me here is Ranga and Rufaru. How are you guys? Good things, uh, Simbi, so how are you? All right. Um, maybe we could just dive straight into it. Um, stock market performance for October. I think um, on a month-on-month -month basis, the ZSE recorded 19% growth in real terms and uh, is probably the best performing stock market in the region um, for the month of October. What's your take, guys? Um, this is in real terms. Is it reconciling with um, our macroeconomic uh, environment? What's the reason behind this uh, phenomenal growth uh, on the stock market? Whereas other areas we seem to be struggling. Yeah, so I, I think it's uh, important to point out that when we say in real terms, we're basically using the parallel market rate to um, yeah, sure. benchmark the performance of the uh, ZSE. And it's not just the best performing uh, market in the region, it's the best performing market uh, in October globally. Uh, so um, does that speak to significant improvements in the macroeconomic environment and the performance on the ground of the companies that are listed? Or does it speak to some other issues? And sadly, um, it, 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 it speaks to the fact that uh, we've seen significant movement in uh, money supply growth in October. And a lot of that money is finding a home on the ZSC to ring fence it from uh, the effects of inflation. So it doesn't actually speak to um, significantly better outlook for the earnings of the companies on the ground or improvements in the macroeconomic environment, what it just speaks to is um, a lot of investors who are inundated with Zim dollars uh, parking them on, on the ZSE. Yeah, um, look, I think just looking at uh, the uh, past uh, reporting season, we are seeing some improvement in terms of uh, the uh, prof profitability of some of these businesses, but uh, it's all because they are coming off a low base and uh, they, it's difficult to uh, argue that they, they, they are justifiable. Uh, they can justify the kind of run that we're seeing on the, on the market right now. Uh, I think for a, a long time, the ZSE has actually tended to be a bad news market. So bad news actually uh, drives the ZSE up. It's different from your typical markets, which uh, uh, tend to do well when there's some positive expectation whether on macroeconomic issues or the general performance of, of, of the companies. So uh, whenever uh, investors are feeling fearful, or not just investors, but pretty much any economic agent, uh, when they are feeling worried and fearful about the prospects of our economy, they tend to go into, into the ZSC. Uh, also for the simple reasons that uh, our currency, the Zim dollar, um, has not been able to hold value. So um, everyone is looking for options where you can legitimately hold some value without uh, uh, crossing some uh, legal regulatory kind of bounds. So if someone has got, uh, finds themselves from their business with a lot of uh, Zim dollar cash, um, maybe more than what you want for your uh, for restocking and your business, what do you do? Uh, so it looks like the ZSC is the only outlet which is, which is available. And... Um, I think it also speaks to maybe the biggest question is how sustainable is it? We all know that the markets can't remain um, mispriced for a long time. So if we think that the valuations that are there right now are not justified by the fundamentals, what does it mean going forward? Uh, and uh, yeah, it's, a, it's, a, it's an easy one. At some point, the market will have to uh, correct. Uh, but for now, I wouldn't be surprised to see the market keeping on going up because uh, as long as the money is coming and uh, uh, these holders of big uh, balances, they, they don't have any other option. They'll still come uh, to the market and buy shares. Okay. So maybe still on that one, um, the stock, the ZSE experienced some technical glitches recently. What's causing us? What's causing that? And how, how much does it cost? Or maybe as Ranga said, the stock market thrives on bad news. It actually makes the market <laughs> go further <laughs> up. <laughs> yeah, so I think they recently, um, the ZSE um, is, is, is quite progressive and dynamic, and they recently uh, launched their own uh, securities depository 
to compete with Chengi Tetsai. Mm -hmm. And um, they've, uh, there's some uh, issues who have moved across. And as with, um, you know, a, a new te technology uh, product, uh, sometimes uh, there are teething pains when you launch it. And uh, I think this is what's happening uh, with the um, automated trading system and the, the ZSC's um, depository. So I think these are just teething problems and hopefully uh, within a week or two, um, it will be smooth sailing again. Um, but obviously what, what, what it's meant is that the trading hours have been constrained instead of uh, the market opening at 9.30 to 4.30. It's been opening much later, as late as 11.30 and you know closing at 4, I mean, um, 2, 2.30. So it's less trading time, and obviously this affects your volumes uh, and it's uh, you know disruptive to trading. But um, you know the fund managers with money still have to find a home, and um, so it hasn't affected the momentum in the market. Yeah. Okay. Um, Zimra Q3 numbers are out, and um, I think generally they have been consistently outperforming their targets. Um, Ranga, are these numbers making sense? Uh, what do we make of them? Uh, is the economy, is it reflective of the economic performance or anything for that matter? Well, I, 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 I'm not sure, or maybe you can uh, to, to, to get out that question to see, uh, try and see if it's linked to the surplus that we have, <laughs> that we keep hearing the minister talking about. But anyway, uh, back to your question. I, I think a, a big um, element of those numbers uh, is actually U.S. dollar revenue uh, collections. Uh, it, it has been increasing, and obviously, as the local currency is losing value, even on the uh, auction market, and uh, the treasury is translating these uh, uh, U.S. dollar revenues into Zim dollars, it um, obviously results in a bigger uh, U.S. Uh, Zim dollar number. And uh, I think obviously going forward, the, this number is actually expected to to, to increase. It's uh, it's positive to the extent that uh, the economy is generating more um, uh, U.S. dollar revenue. And I think he, uh, what now needs to be done, maybe as they are planning for 2022, is to try and make sure that you, they match the Zim dollar, uh, the U.S. dollar revenue to U.S. dollar expenses. And I, I think that might actually help in a way also on the right side, for example, where they can pay using US dollars uh, for services, they have to uh, use US dollars because the moment you pay huge sums of money in uh, in local currency, uh, usually most of some of those uh, holders of those big balances would have to find a home, and m most of them will have to get currency from somewhere. So to take a, a simple example of say it's a contract for five million US dollars, if government chooses uh, to pay. Uh, 5 million from their uh, US dollar revenue, which they can do because they have to, that will not have an impact in terms of the rate directly in a way that's violent. But just imagine if they uh, pay a Zim dollar equivalent of that 5 million, whatever number it is, it will, and it comes into the market, it creates a lot of havoc. So I think maybe going into 2022 in terms of their planning uh, to the extent that uh, we keep seeing this uh, Zim, uh, US, Zim dollar, US dollar revenue increasing. Maybe uh, even the expenses also have to be um, uh, matched that way. Uh, is the, so I, it's, I don't think the economy is expanding to that extent, but what's happening is the transacting currencies are sort of uh, uh, changing uh, from where a mix where the Zim dollar was predominant for some time to increasingly uh, as to having a scenario where most transactions are now becoming uh, Zim dollar, US dollars. That would then be translated, and I, and I think that's that's where the uh, the, the number is coming from, uh, in my view. Um, I don't know, Farrell. Yeah, I think it's hard to make sense of these numbers because they're Zim dollar figures, and we are in a hyperinflationary environment. So to compare our performance in terms of the Zim dollar collections for this year to last year, uh, it's not really like for like because of the impact. Uh, of inflation. So what you'll find is that the companies that are listed on the ZSC, they are required to inflation adjust their numbers in terms of the accounting standards. And I think it will be helpful for the users of the numbers Zimra puts out to, for them to also uh, make inflation adjustments so that when we look at the numbers, we can see whether uh, in real terms, uh, 
we're collecting more or we're collecting less and then we can then that speaks to whether the economy is doing better or worse than you know last year whereas just looking at them you know and again the targets don't really tell us much because if uh, the target is conservative uh, we're always going to outperform the the target because inflation will um, chip in in terms of performance instead of uh, actual uh, growth um, in, in, in collections. So I think that's a challenge that speaks to uh, the hyperinflationary environment. And perhaps going forward, um, we can have numbers that are inflation adjusted uh, and then we can compare like for like. OK, um, maybe on the other end now, we've got uh, our visit hiking the policy rates from 40 to 60 percent. Um, can you give us a forecast of maybe how the market will react in the next um, three months or so to the actions of the RBZ? So I think, uh, so that announcement was in the uh, MPC, I think uh, for the 28th of October, uh, uh, thereabouts. I, I think if you look at the, uh, the main objective of that policy announcement, I think they were trying to deal with uh, excess liquidity on the market. So um, I think this was just a way of making borrowing more expensive mm -hmm. to try and uh, rein in on uh, uh, what they believe is uh, speculative uh, uh, borrowing. And uh, and I think related to that, we also saw increases in uh, statutory reserve um, uh, requirements and also uh, that uh, they're going to be increasing their open market operations. I think to try and mop up uh, the, the the liquidity. So I, 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 for for the corporate that obviously um, would want to borrow uh, Zim dollars, that re, that represents a big jump in terms of the cost of uh, uh, cost of funds. Uh, is it going to be effective? Uh, well, I think the biggest problem is um, as long as we keep uh, get, get, getting more money being uh, created, um, uh, money supply and all into the system. Uh, it may the, the rate changes may not uh, be effective because the source of that liquidity is not actually your typical corporate or even the speculator that uh, is intended uh, on that. So I, I think it's also in the yeah, just a way for them to try and show up the Zim dollar uh, attractiveness there. But I think it's probably too late because. Uh, each day that passes on uh, the Zim dollar, the the rejection. I think more and more people are rejecting Zim dollar for transacting purposes, and um, I, I don't think this will also be uh, effective. We need to start thinking in terms of a U.S. dollar economy. In my view, I have a more optimistic take. I think it's positive. Uh, uh, one of the reasons why we've seen the dollar devalue uh, and people lose confidence in. Uh, the local currencies because of negative real interest rates. You know for sure if you have a Zim dollar balance today and you leave it sitting in your bank account, uh, six months from now, it will have significantly less purchasing power. So, and that drives, you know, what a lot of behavior that uh, is atypical, you know, like people buying shares, you know, uh, who ordinarily have no interest in shares because they know that uh, the shares will retain value uh, better than the bank balance. But if you have uh, real interest rates, right, you then have the comfort of knowing that, uh, you know, if whatever bank balance you have today, six months from now, it will have the same purchasing power because through the function of uh, interest income, uh, it will maintain value. And if, so if, 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 if it's paid, to it, if the interest rates are higher than inflation, then um, you can comfortably sit on your bank balance. Uh, knowing that it's going to hold value. So, you know, um, moving the lending rate to 60% in an environment where I think the October inflation figure, annual inflation figure was 54%, that brings us to real um, inflation, um, uh, real interest rates. So that encourages uh, people to save in local currency and it, it really engender confidence in the local currency. What remains to be seen is whether um, we see consistent adjustments to the interest rates as uh, inflation moves. So if, for example, hypothetically, for November, the annual inflation number is 65, are we going to see the move to um, interest rate of 70 or 85 to encourage people to 
uh, hold. So that's that's the key question. You know, um, on the currency side, we saw the move, uh, the currency from 88 to 97. That was uh, a step in the right direction. But then this Tuesday, it only moved uh, by about uh, one point to uh, 90, 98. So, you know, which, so it means they're not really um, serious about bridging the gap between the official rate and the power market rate. So it remains to be seen whether if inflation continues to move, um, whether they adjust interest rates to keep them real. But uh, I think it's a very positive step. Um, but, you know, unfortunately, we've seen historically they take uh, a positive step and then stop. Um, so hopefully uh, we will see uh, this is a policy shift and we will see uh, positive real interest rates going forward. Okay. I think that's a very clear recommendation. So, uh, Ranga, mm -hmm. in view of your uh, perspective, what bold re recommendation would you give in case maybe the relevant authorities are watching? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, look, I, I, I would say the issues to do with po police consistency. So uh, I think we, uh, business and uh, even households must be able to... Um, plan accordingly so they need to know what they are working with and so uh, I, I think uh, it's it's important that they we advance uh, steadily uh, if not rap rapidly to towards our uh, market market forces you can't have uh, an exchange rate uh, below 100 uh, at the auction when the rest of uh, the economy is transacting at 181 and uh, I think even the disclosure in the MPS that I think about 1.5 billion US dollars is circulating, it just tells you that uh, uh, the market actually has got capacity to be um, uh, playing this role of allocating of, uh, of, of resources. And I think you might, we, we might actually see more, uh, even the rate actually coming off if they would actually let the market uh, um, uh, play, uh, play its part. And... Um, yeah, I th when it comes to issues to do with the inflation and also uh, the money supply growth, I think the major creator of, of money is actually government and government related activities. So it's actually within their power to try and uh, um, control it. Mm -hmm. uh, and as for whether the economy should go in dollar or US dollar, I think uh, the market will have a say at the end of the day. Because money is only valuable to the extent that uh, people who use it still uh, put some value in it, so, so it's a diff it's a difficult one. And and what's clear is uh, right now is because we we are supposed to have a bamba harvest, but I think what is clear is um, a bamba harvest alone is not enough. So it needs to be supported by other uh, uh, macroeconomic uh, um, uh, policies that are progressive. All right. Uh Thank you, Rufaro. Any quick uh, recommendation? Yeah, I think um, I, I, I tend to agree with Ranga. I think uh, one of our biggest challenges is uh, policy inconsistency. Um, let's, you know, if, if, if everybody is clear in terms of yeah. uh, what the policy framework is going to look like six months from now, 12 months from now, I think it will be easier for people to make decisions in the business sector, in the private sector. But uh, this co constant chopping and changing does not engender um, confidence in um, the, the government policy and in uh, Zimbabwe as an investment destination. So um, I think that's that's something that would be extremely helpful uh, to see some some policy consistency. All right, uh, thank you guys. Uh, that's it for this week's edition. See you next time. Thank you.